some role play so everybody can see some uh, scenarios that go on at the abortion mill. And our first scenario is with Deanna and Alora. And Alora told me to tell you to imagine she's a little younger. <laughs> All right. No, thank you. I'm fine. Well, we just want to give you some resources on adoption. There's also some great resources in here on the local crisis pregnancy. I'm a Christian. I've already prayed about this, and I want you to leave me alone. God is okay with me doing this. He understands. Well, ma'am, if you're a Christian, you know that your baby is a blessing from the Lord, that your baby is a gift, it's a reward for you. I don't see it that way. I already have three children at home. I've talked to some of the women in my church, and they understand what I'm doing. And I know that God is going to forgive me. He understands when we go through difficult times, so don't judge me. The Bible says don't judge. Mm -hmm. Well, ma'am, I'm not here to judge you or condemn you, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, do you know I don't how far along you are? I don't want to see that because you, what you're doing is you're playing with my emotions, and I don't want to do that. I'm a Christian. God is a loving God. He forgives. He forgives. Well, I understand what you're saying. God is loving and he is forgiving. But he's also God full of wrath, and he must punish sin. And the sixth commandment is, thou shalt not murder. And we must not violate God's laws. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. I don't worship the same God you do. Mm -hmm. well, Ma'am, I understand that. I, obviously, you know, you, you've shown you, that you're shaking your fist at God, that you're right now in rebellion to him. But what I want you to do is to turn from your sin. Just as I turn from my sin, I'm not any better than you. But God has given me a new heart. He can give you a new heart. The Bible says that many will come to him on that day and say, Lord, Lord, I prophesy in your name, I cast out demons in your name, I did all these wonderful works. But he will say to them, away from me, I never knew you. And I don't want you to be one of those many that come to him on that day. And ma'am, your baby is so precious in the eyes of God, he would never encourage you to take the life of your innocent child. I thank you for what you're doing, and I understand where you're coming from, and I really am against abortion myself. I really am. I'm pro-life. But this is a situation where I just can't have another child. My husband might leave me if we have another baby. And I'm going to go with this, and I know that God is going to forgive me for this. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Have a good day. Now, you might think, wow, is that real? No. And I've got to say that within the last couple of years, I'm seeing more and more and more women claiming to be Christians going to some of the churches, evangelical churches in this community, and it is heart-wrenching. It is almost harder to deal with the girls calling them Christians than the ones that flat out deny God. Seriously. Okay, our next one is going to be Diane bringing her daughter. And Winnie, sidewalk counselor. Winnie, can I just talk with you for a moment? Uh, we don't we don't need to hear anything you have to say. Oh we're, we're just fine. Hi, sweetheart. You're so pretty. What's your name? Don't Hi, bother her. Don't well, I don't want to bother her. I don't want to care. We just want to help. Well, if you I care, you, you just you leave us alone. Girl, you just you leave us alone. I can't do that, ma'am. She looks like she's scared. Are you sure you want to be here? This is a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. This isn't health care. This isn't health care. Have you just, have let you, me give you some information. We don't want Here's it. a place that you can go where somebody will help her. There are people who love her and who can, can give you some I advice. I love her. I'm taking care of her. I'm her mother. Well, you might want to reconsider this, okay? Please take the information. Would you like to see it? What's your, what's your name? Hey, Amy. My name is Ms. Don't Amy. talk to Amy her. Amy, is it okay if I talk with you? I'm a woman like you. I'm a mom just like you. And I know you love your daughter. And I know you want the best for her. But she looks like she's scared. I know scared. best for her. And having this baby is not the right thing. Well, do you believe in God? Have you ever cried out in the name of Jesus asking for help? Have you ever? Do you believe in God, Amy? Do you believe? Do you know that you know that you're baby trying to put tell me she she has you enough know that going on? God this is not this is not right. God wants to help you. Wants to help you're trying Here's to make her feel bad. No, I'm not. I'm here because I care about you and her. We're talking about your grandchild. There's help for you. Don't give up on God. And you look like you're a little bit upset. That's okay. I understand being afraid because this is a big thing. This she is your daughter. Is, this is going to ruin her life. It is not. Do you understand what this means? 
understand. I understand that God loves her enough and you, you enough. You, the, you, the, all the people. Well, you think God will answer everything. God does answer everything, but you have to have faith. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You think God will answer everything, but you have to have faith in him. You've got to trust him. He'll help, I promise you. I guarantee it. The Bible says so. Who's going to take care of this baby? This is America. You don't? Are you suffering? You look like you eat well. <laughs> <laughs> If I take it, will you leave us alone? <laughs> Can't tell you how many times mother brings daughter. Daughter doesn't want it. Mother forces, like I said earlier. Make sure you let that girl know mom cannot force her. Mom gets mad at you, she'll get mad at you, but that girl has the right to know mom cannot force her. Okay, we've got our last role playing, and we got Jermaine as the sidewalk counselor, and we've got this couple coming for an abortion. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Hey, back up, man. Back up, back up. <laughs> Man, we good, man. No, take your juice and go somewhere, man. We, we fine. We got something to do here, okay? So don't worry about it. That's cool, man. Just back up, but Back up. Man, back up, man. Back up, man. Sir, I'm not here for any violence. My girl, we got to do this, man. Why? Can I ask an actual question? Why are you here today? I'm in your business, man. Okay, well, listen. You know God loves you. He loves you, too, young lady. He loves you. Yeah, God loves us. He's, he's he don't want us to ruin our life. He's, he wants, you know, we got things to do. I have a little bit of information for you. No, we don't. We cool. We cool. Uh, no, no. Let's go. Sorry, listen. Don't listen. Don't listen. Now, listen. Man, you know, all y'all do is just judge me, man. All they do is just judge, folks. Man, back up. I'm not trying to judge you. Man, you judging us, man. You're a young lady. Hey, don't make up. That's my girl, man. Back up. Back up, man. So, look. Do you love us? Yeah. Are we doing it? Do you realize that if she don't want to be she don't have this child, man, we we good, man. There's a lot of things that can happen. There's been death and results of abortions. We love Jesus too. He'll take care of us. He'll take care of us. He'll take care of all of us. He God. He'll take care of us. Yes, he will. He will. He'll take care of us. You go ahead. You go ahead. Jesus forgives everybody. He forgives, right? Yes, he And he merciful. Yes, we're not. We good. We good. We good. Also, in the Word of God, six commandments in Joshua. I know the Word, man. I know the Word. Okay. I know the Word. Are you a firm believer of God? I am, man. We are. We are. We control every every Sunday. Control every Sunday. We good. Okay. Jesus, we saved already. We'll repent later. We'll repent later. We'll repent later. We gotta do this. Don't do this. We got lives. We got future. We ain't ready for no child right now. We ain't ready for no child right now. Sir, we young, man. We young. We ain't ready. We truly believe in Jesus Christ. He will meet all your needs. My needs are met. There is places here that can have this time. That's more helpful than this place here. They don't concern about. They don't care about you. They can actually end up in death. It could be much. Don't listen to him. It could be medical complications. We talked about it already. It's already done. Trust your heart. Man, you have a child. There's a child inside of you. This child has fingers. It has fingers. You don't even know us, man. You don't even know us. I know I don't. You know what we're going through. I care so much for you. You don't even know us, man. You don't know us, man. I love Christ with you. You don't know what we're going through right now. There's people that can help you, sir. If you want to talk to me, I can take you. I can take you out to lunch and we can talk about this. There's a lot of resources, sir. Okay. I'm going to take you. There's a lot of resources that can help you. I'm with Jesus. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take you. There is no Lord like you. I got you. There is no Lord. I got you. Trust your heart. This man talking to you. This is a bunch of noise. I got you. You know you know you know you're ready right now. Let's go. We don't, we don't need. I got it. I'll, I'll take care. Don't worry about it. No, we good. No, no. No, don't take it, babe. Thank you. Thank you. The reason I wanted to bring Jermaine up is because this is not just for women to sidewalk counsel. Men are very, very, very valuable to have on the sidewalk. More valuable than we know because so many men bring women. And it's so good to have men out there. I tell you, if there was a man out every time we went out, 
it would be so so wonderful. There's a covering with a man. Thank you, Jermaine. You go out a lot, and I, I really appreciate you so much. For those of you who've never been out, watching those three scenarios, do you feel more confident or are you a little bit more nervous now? <laughs> um, I do want you to know that not every interaction is like those interactions. Um, there are women who come who truly, I believe, they truly are saved and their hearts are softened, and God is using us as we go out there and wear his hands and his feet and his voice, and they choose life for their babies. And there are even situations like the ones that we just saw where the woman, especially where the girl was kind of being, you know, forced, um, where she will choose life and she will run and get help. Um, one thing in all three of those situations, even though there was somebody who was very confrontational, very argumentative, in all the situations with Deanna, Penny, and Jermaine, if you notice, they stay pretty calm. And they, um, you keep your voice low as, as much as you're able to, and you want to always be offering help. And we try to not get caught up into yelling matches and arguing. There are times that it's happened with all of us. Um, we get caught up in things, but we need to really strive to talk gently and carefully to the women and pointing them to Christ. And just to finish up the, the uh, manual, you can look on your own. There's key scriptures that you would want, just you, you really want to know them. There's a diary of an unborn baby. And then in the back, um, I know it's hard to look at, but there are the diagrams of the certain abortion procedures, the suction, the d &E, and the partial birth abortion. Um, at, all, at the three clinics, uh, EPOC, Orlando Women's Center and All Women, uh, All Women's Health Center in Maitland, they do um, all three of these. So Planned Parenthood does them up to 14 weeks. So I believe they do uh, the suction and the D and E. But we have another major hurdle to get over, and that is now the chemical abortions. And it is it is really really a bad situation. The girls go in, um, they come out with a little bag. And what you have to say when you know that it's a chemical abortion is, do not take the second pill. Your baby can live. Don't take it. Because I tell you, there's girls that go home and go, oh my gosh, what have I done? You need to let them know not to take the second pill. And then go to a crisis pregnancy center or go, go to their doctor. Another thing is, is that hanging around and waiting for the women to come out. It's a very, very hard ministry. Maybe somebody here is called to do that instead of being there when the women go in. Because it's really important to be there when the women come out. They're really broken. And you have to have a real gift to be able to, to do that. But I would highly encourage, if any of you are led to do that, let us know. It, it's hard because we want to give them information. We want to tell them, if they're injured, don't come back to this clinic. Go to the emergency room. And we want to let them know that there's post-abortion counseling and that they will need it. Even the friend that's taken, get your friend to post-abortion counseling. So um, right now, we're going to open it up to questions. So if anybody has any questions. Hi. Um, I've had a few arguments with people that I know about this. Uh, and I just would like to have uh, good um, sources to know that, to let them know that this is like factual information. Like overpopulation is a big thing. Like how can we prove that this world is not being overpopulated through like, four thousand extra babies being born every day? Well, really, in my opinion, if somebody asked me about overpopulation, I would say this is about one baby in each. One baby is a person and is a human being. And even if the world was overpopulated, is it ever right to kill a human being? Argument ended. I wouldn't even go any further. That, that, that's it. Because every human being is precious. No matter the circumstance, they're precious. They're precious in God's sight. No matter what argument they give you. Um, I was wondering what 
exactly to do when I get scripture twisted at me a lot. Yesterday I, I was talking to a lady and she was like, he who is without sin cast the first stone and then she went inside and I didn't oh, really no. that <laughs> know how to respond. Um, well, we do, I wanted to reiterate what Michelle said about arguing. We do have to be careful that we don't get caught up in arguments because a lot of times people are wanting to justify what they're doing and they're going to they're going to do all kinds of things, and we do get scripture twisted. Um, in that situation, um, he was without sin, cast the first stone. Um, what did Jesus say, you know, in that situation? He said, go and sin no more. Um, he was not winking at the sin. He was not condoning the sin. And so um, we have to be faithful to do what God says um, in the situation about the overpopulation. God says you shall not murder. Um, again, we're trying to help women realize that their babies are little people. They're human persons. And one of the things that, um, that we would use, too, would be if there is uh, another child, we would say, would you, if your situation were to get worse, would you take a gun to your two-year-old's head? Or if there was a three-year-old running out into the street and a bus was coming, um, what would you do? And I can't tell you how many women have said, um, well, you know, I'd see what his mother was doing. And, and I'm like, are you kidding me? There's a three-year-old running out in the street. The mother's having a conversation with somebody. You're going to let that mother decide whether her child lives or dies. You're not going to fight for that child. So we are trying to, um, you know, we want to remember the personhood of the little babies. And then also when they, when they twist scripture, um, I get tripped up with that a lot. And I have to go back to the whole you know, don't judge thing that we hear. Um, Deanna has some great um, comebacks with that about um, how, to, how to deal with that about when somebody says don't judge. The Bible actually isn't telling us not to judge. The Bible is saying don't judge lest you be judged. And, and we're not condemning them. The Bible says if they're without Christ, they are condemned already. So we are standing there to warn them. You know, we're not the ultimate judge. We're not the righteous judge, but God is. And he doesn't wink at our sin. Schedules. How do you go about getting the schedules? I'm glad you mentioned that. If everybody can make sure that you have signed one of these, um, the papers, put your email address. I send out a schedule every week. And what we're trying to, uh, there's different uh, times that if you get with me, I can tell you what times need to be covered. You're in the Tampa area, then I'll hook you up with Devin and uh, Dick Maxwell. Dick Maxwell. So just send an email to me, or I'll get your email. Okay. okay. Yes. When? Uh, where do we get the supplies when we're out on the sidewalk? Just give me a call and I'll mail them to you. And we'd like to start maybe having monthly meetings too, where we can just kind of keep on keep our material up and running. Two questions. One, just clarification. The partial birth abortion is performed where? All Women's Health Center. And it depends on the abortionist. And I know uh, Mr. Gingelbach doesn't do them, but there are other ones that do. And if you look on their website, you'll see it. Okay. And um, well, how do they determine whether to um, give them a, the, the woman a surgical abortion or a chemical abortion? Because I've heard that. She decides. And if you look on the websites, there's all kinds of coupons and deals for chemical abortions or surgical abortions. I would encourage each one of you to go on the sites of each one of these abortion clinics and you'll be pretty horrified at the sales techniques. It's, it's, it's very sad. Any other questions? I know that Patty Smith was alone for many years in front of the clinics, but how do you go about getting more people to get involved in the ministry? It's just word of mouth, getting it out. And, you know, the Lord's been gracious in the last year. I mean, there's been more and more and more people coming out. As a matter of fact, now there's actually five abortion mills in Orlando. And we've got two women over here that are getting ready in the next couple of months to start going to the fifth one. So praise the Lord. That one's going to be covered. So that's exciting. So if you're interested, you can maybe hook up with, that's on 50, that's, so if you're like in the Melbourne area, that would be the closest one for you. Um, I actually have the opposite problem. I go to a pretty large church and pictures of me will get posted on Facebook and everyone will see them. And I have 
too many people that are wanting to come with me, which is an excellent problem to have, yeah. but I don't know. I feel like when there's more than three or four or five people there that the mom will be, I, if I was the mom, I would be scared to come and, and talk to that many people. So I'm wondering if I should just tell people no or just tell them to try. Oh, don't tell them no. Yeah, no. I won't tell them no. But that, that would be the last resort. But. Uh, but there's, I mean, you know, unfortunately, like I said, we've got five abortion mills here. And if one mill is really, really covered, um, there's other mills that they could go to, or if there's a lot of people, just make sure that there's really only two sidewalk counselors, and you're you're both you know kind of in coordinated with each other. And the others can stand and pray. Um, that is something that we've encountered at Orlando Women's Center. On certain days, there's lots of people there, sidewalk counselors, and then some days there's only one or two people there. On the days where there are a lot of people, um, it's good to kind of have them. Like there's a back. They park in the back, or sometimes they park down the street. So you can have people in different areas. I do know of a woman one time, though, who didn't have her abortion. She told me later it was because she said it was like there was a wall across the entrance, and she just could not bring herself to walk past that wall, and it was Christian standing there. So. Mm -hmm. Diane, you had something? Yeah, I was thinking that that's true, that probably people will turn around. Mm -hmm. I heard one comment from somebody that, uh, you know, you call them, us protesters, mm -hmm. but they've not gone to an abortion clinic in Daytona and come to the EPA mm -hmm. because there was too many people there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it mm -hmm. was like they had to make a real inconvenience mm -hmm. to do that. But the um, but I think you're right. Like a group just going off and praying and maybe having like St. Paul's does. We have a beautiful worship mm -hmm. service once a month there, and it's right outside that. That waiting room, waiting room window, mm -hmm. and I just think God's word is just being heard, and mm -hmm. um, the songs that we sing, and the prayers that we have with people there, just got to be powerful. Mm -hmm. So it would be great for a church to have so many people, but then have something like that. We have deacons and elders. Yeah, it, it's really great. Um, there are churches that have basically adopted abortion mills. Um, Diane's church, St. Paul's Presbyterian Church, like she was saying, comes out once a month. And they, I mean, it, it's beautiful. And for the sidewalk counselors, it's so wonderful to have, the, have them praying and singing. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't know, you, knew, you just know that God's taking care of you. And over at All Women's Health Center, we've got on, on uh, Wednesdays, we've got St. Mary Magdalene. They come every week. They come walking from their church. Um, and then on Tuesdays, we have St. Margaret Mary. So, if, you know, maybe you're not called to sidewalk council, but you really are a prayer warrior. Maybe you can organize a prayer group to come out. You know, that's a very, very valuable, just as valuable as the sidewalk counselors. You know, you wouldn't believe how many women have changed their minds seeing people just standing there praying. It's amazing. First, I want to say praise the Lord to everybody that's out here that came in today. Awesome turnout. And uh, secondly, I'm down at the abortion clinic down in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Saturdays, they do abortions on Saturdays. As far as uh, getting information to those who may be going in or coming out as a, um, another place that they can go to, another resource on Saturday, do you have any uh, information? It's a real problem. Yeah. It's a real problem. There's only one crisis pregnancy center, and that's not even. But, Pretty much all the side, all the crisis pregnancy centers are closed on Saturday. It's amazing, I, you know. So can you play, pray that they will change that policy? Well, if that's Jermaine. Uh, as far as First Baptist go, don't they do something on Saturday? Is it like ultrasounds or something, or does it? Does it no. depends on when they. No. Mm -mm. And the only mobile unit that used to be around is no longer around. They had to close shop, so that's that was sad. Yes, Daniel. Um, um, there is. Um, I know of a group of folks that are in the process of uh, getting mobile units down here. Um, oh, great. Within not not anytime soon. They have a few cities that they're targeting before Orlando. They're going to Memphis um, and I think Atlanta, and then they're great. Daniel. Um, for uh, all women. Are the clients allowed to park at the live library over there? Um, no. 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 And that issue is still alive and well. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're dealing with that. 
But no, they're not allowed to park. They're not supposed, that's the taxpayer's parking lot, right. and they're not supposed to be sending them down to the library. Okay. I would say as far as the Saturday, um, if, if there's no uh, pregnancy center that's open, and sometimes like at Orlando Women's Center, their uh, killing time on Wednesday mornings is early, like two hours before any of the crisis pregnancy centers open. Um, that's when we need to kind of be networking amongst ourselves. There could be women that you know, Jermaine, on Saturdays who aren't able to go out, but you could put them in touch. You know, you could have the aborting mom, you could have her call somebody and talk and meet for coffee or breakfast. Just get them away from the killing place. Is there a possi uh, any possibility that we can uh, get a group together to maybe talk to somebody at First Baptist and see if they're willing to do volunteer services idea. on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a real good idea. And I think that's possible. Uh, Carmen is wonderful, the director of yeah, that CDC. She's great. Awesome yeah. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the chemical abortion? I know some people don't know a lot about the chemical abortion. What I would what say, it's, it's pretty detailed. What I would suggest you guys do, get on the internet, <coughs> Google it, or go to a pro-life site. You know, Priests for Life have an excellent website. He, uh, Father Frank Pavone really goes into detail on what the chemical abortion is. That would be start there, because it would just, it would it's you, you'd leave. I, we, we could talk about it, but you'd leave and go what? It's just better to just sit there and read it. Um, sometimes something I've heard is I'm not here to get an abortion or I'm here just to get a checkup. What do you what do you respond? To? Would you treat her like she's there for an abortion? Because a lot of women will tell you they're not there for an abortion, but they're really there for an abortion. But you can do that in a way where you're not out and out calling her a liar right. um, because you can lose them like that. There have been women that I know have got to be there for an abortion, uh, maybe because they're there an hour before the place opens, you know, who goes an hour before the place opens, you know, for a checkup or to get birth control, or who brings their mother, sister, boyfriend, and, you know, three-year-old with them uh, to wait in the car while they're just running in to get something. But there's a way you can do that, um, and you can say, okay, you know, that's fine, but I just want to tell you, and you try to get information in their hands, and you, you just still, in your heart, you're, you're praying. This is something, you know, we always need to be praying for discernment. God will help us, and sometimes we, we don't need to know, you know, but God can work through us, and uh, we're trying to get information into their hands, and just continuing to say, well, do you know what this place is? Do you know what they do here? And then you talk about it from that standpoint. And we wanted to let you all know that um, if God has really gotten your heart today and this is what you want to do, this Wednesday, uh, Winnie is going to be um, having you come to Planned Parenthood to shadow her. If you rather go over to All Women's, Amber and I will be there and you could shadow us and you'll be at uh, or Orlando Women's. You could shadow with or Laura. So let us know before you leave if you'd like to do that. We'll expect to see you there either Wednesday um, or Saturday. And then, of course, Saturday, if Wednesday doesn't work out, then Saturday you can meet Winnie at Planned Parenthood. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle and Laura, for this training. Want to give them a hand? closes down every abortion center in the city, we have a job to do. This is not something we'll do and stop. It's ongoing. That means that you, all of us have to pray continually, continuously that God would help us and that he would use us and we would show forth his love. We're talking about praying without ceasing. And it's like unto a mother, a mother's love, a mother's love never ever stops for a child. Those of you who are not moms yet, you'll know this someday. But uh, uh, the love of anybody, if you love anybody, that love never stops. That's what the Lord says to us about praying. We pray without ceasing. When you pray without ceasing, you get everything covered. In God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's what we do. We pray without ceasing. Now, another thing that's going on is the 40 Days for Life event. Although all of the abortion centers are manned all the time throughout the year, specifically starting February 22nd, we're going to be praying for 40 days. We're praying and fasting. We're going to have the kickoff. Thanks, Wendy. Tuesday. We're going to have the kickoff on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Please join us. We need, need you and would like you to come out just to usher in the presence of God for fervent prayer. That place is a demonic place. We don't go out there not taking it seriously. Amen? So please come out. Additionally, we'll need for you today 
you, uh, Michelle gave you forms, but I also put forms out there for 40 days. Please make the commitment to stand with us during the 40 days. Find a time slot prayerfully that fits your life. And you're probably going to have to be a little bit not fitted to your life. Because, you know, God just doesn't work like that. We just have to do what he says to do. So pray. And God, will, you, he'll let you know Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, 10 to 12, you're at 10th Avenue. <laughs> I was just thinking on Dorothy. <laughs> but we'll be there from 7 to 7. Please, please do this. Now, you know, there's a song the lady used to say, so I can sing quiet, y'all, if you don't know what she said. Just keep the God giving. The more you give, the more he gives to you. That's what the Lord used to say, that y'all remember? That's how he is. There's no way that we're going to stand out there and cry out with women that their souls will be saved for the kingdom of God and babies' lives will be saved that they can live out his purpose that God will bless us for. I'm not just talking about bless me. I'm talking about bless my children, my grandchildren. That's right. You know, that we will live lives of victory. We will not live lives of defeat. So Christians don't live lives of defeat. We have challenges, sure enough, right? We have things that we think are going to take us out, but we are not defeated. Yeah. We walk in victory in Christ Jesus. So therefore, we got to do what he's calling us to do. So sign up. Find a time that's yours, own it, and come out. We, we do not want anybody to be praying out there alone. We will be out there, but it's not safe alone. Because what? how did God say to do it? Two by two? Okay. And I'm asking for three. And thank you so much for what you said about your church in the crowd. But realistically, it doesn't happen like that. Not for 40 days. Not at OWC, not at Planned Parenthood, not at all women's. At any given time, you can find yourself out there alone because other things happen. The enemy's busy, but things happen. But God has a ram in the bush. The ram in the bush is going to be that, that time that you said. So please, don't, don't, what all I'm asking for 40 days is if, if you go on the, on the site, and you can, it's a very good site. You can sign up online. If you go online and you see that somebody's already on the schedule, three or four people already on the schedule from 10 to 12 on Monday, if at all possible, don't pick that time to come out. Choose an hour later or two hours later when nobody's there. Like Michelle said, what we want, ideally what I want, I believe the Lord would have us, is to have a trained sidewalk counselors. Now we got how many in the room? 50? We need one trained sidewalk counselor. One, you can talk for two hours. Holy Ghost will let you do that. We need a person who can be warring in prayer, and we need somebody standing at the driveway. What we'll do is, say Anna and I are out there, we usually team up. So for an hour, I'll be the sidewalk counselor. And then, then Anna will be praying, walking and praying. And then at 11, she'll take over being the sidewalk counselor, and I'll be walking and praying. So we won't be talking over each other. That's what we want to do. We want to do this thing the right way for God's glory. And it's so easy to do it the wrong way. Like we were doing the sidewalk counseling exercises. It don't work like that, y'all. Because y'all know it doesn't. We don't run people down. We don't. That lady, I never would have grabbed. I never would have touched her. Except if it's OWC, you can touch her because you can walk right alongside of her. But you can't do it at Planned Parenthood. You have to kind of do, have to extend your voice a little bit. So please just keep that in mind. And I don't want to just keep saying the same thing again, but I do want you to please, please sign up. And then Alora didn't tell you, but Alora goes, Hi, my name's Alora. And that's what we all... <laughs> it's so sweet. Um, and so I learned to say, y'all heard me say that. Hi, my name's Winnie. <laughs> but that's what you want. You want the love of God to come forth in your voice so people, the women will hear you. And that their lives can be changed and their babies' lives can be saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Winnie, what's the website where we uh, I got some information out there, but it's, thanks for asking that question. It's 40 Days for Life, www.40daysforlife.com slash Orlando. And then you have to register, and if you've already registered, you're, and you remember your password word from before, it should be the same. And if you don't, then you can re-register, and then go on the visual and sign up. Try to do that just so that we can kind of know what's going on. If, if you can, and you have to come one day without it, it's understandable. We understand. 
but please so that we'll know that we'll be manned all the time. We're really trying to get uh, David B. Red and the team up there, wherever they are, I forget where they are in D.C. right now. They're wanting to know that we got people signed up at least for the first week. And pastor's going to do an opening prayer on Wednesday night, our pastor, so everybody's invited. Please come if you can. Where is it? Oh, Planned Parenthood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the address is inside. 726 Tampa Avenue. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and somebody was asking about is it unsafe out there? And we've been out there a couple of years. We do have, like Michelle said, we do have favor with the police. Mm -hmm. And we, we do because we, we know that they're important. And whatever they ask us to do, we do it with their reason. And, and we've not had an issue with the police. Ever. Ever. Amen? Not even Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Kick off. Kick off. Is that two? Is that six? Six o'clock. Fervent prayer. That's what we're doing. Fervent prayer. And we have some, well, of course, we have worship. And, uh, and we'll pray for one hour. And then the schedule starts at seven o'clock the next morning. Amen. And what's going to happen on Wednesday, you said? We're praying all day. That's the start. That's the start. Day. That's the start. Thank you. going to be there No. No. Pastor's is opening, doing the kickoff for us Wednesday night. Yeah. Tuesday. 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 That's what oh, you're pastor. No, but uh, uh, again, 7 to 7, starting February 22nd, all the way to April the 1st. Also, if you can jot down, there's something really, really important coming up. March 23rd, it is a national, nationwide effort against the contraceptive mandate that you've probably all been hearing about in the news, which can strip away religious freedom. Yeah for all of us, for churches and schools and so on and so forth. But it's a national rally prayer vigil at all the federal courthouses in America. And we are gonna be participating here, here in Orlando, 12 o'clock, March 23rd, at the federal courthouse. I'll be sending out flyers that it's gonna be a, a, pretty big, a pretty big statement. It's gonna be pastor-led, priest-led, and so please try to make it. This can be a strong statement to our community and to our nation as, as American citizens. Any, any other questions? Okay, so what we're going to do is pass the basket around, and we need you please to pull in, fill out those, these sheets right here. And just put them in. Put them in, and then uh, those of you who have a schedule, if you just want to put it.